Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. And this recording is just a short demonstration on using SPSS syntax to support transparency and data manipulation techniques. In recent years, there has been a lot of attention given towards having transparency in data analysis. As a result, the popularity of programming languages for statistics like RStudio and Python, to name a few, have grown tremendously due to their ability to support transparency in data analysis. I'm a big advocate of these packages and would use them on a regular basis. However, there is no doubt that with these packages there is a steep learning curve, and sometimes researchers might prefer to stick with a package that is more interactive and has a user-friendly interface like SPSS. Users of SPSS are probably familiar with SPSS syntax. The purpose of this recording is to highlight that if you are more comfortable and confident with using SPSS, transparency in your data analysis can still be achieved through using its syntax. To illustrate aspects of this, I'll work through some data manipulation techniques that I'd regularly apply using SPSS syntax, which might be of interest and help to some. More often than not, data is initially stored in Excel. The data can be from a lab experiment, it could be survey data, clinical trial data, and so on. So the first port of call will be to import it into SPSS. However, when you import the data, it is important to have a track record of that process. Also, when the data is imported into SPSS, you can often find that the data is not in the desired format to output the appropriate descriptive statistics or apply the appropriate statistical inference at a later stage. You might find that you will have to change the data type from string to numeric. You might find that you need to address issues with missing data, or that the levels of measurement, labels, decimal places are not in the desired format. Due to SPSS's interface, changing the properties is easily achieved through navigating your way through drop down menus and clicking various options. However, there is no record of those changes unless you use syntax. Syntax is like your diary of data analysis. Other data manipulation techniques that you might wish to keep a record of is deleting variables from the original data set or reordering variables, along with simply saving your data set at the end. These eight points are not exhaustive of data manipulation techniques that are potentially encountered in data analysis. There's also the case of what you do if you encounter a typo in your data or extreme outliers and so on. These are points that I'll address in later recordings. The eight points in this slide are simply based on the issues that I'd often encounter when I need to import data in SPSS. To illustrate how we can use syntax to keep a record of these data manipulation techniques, I'll use a sample questionnaire to act as the context to the data that we'll see in Excel. The questions here are examples of the four levels of measurement that we have in statistics. The response for question one yields nominal data. Question two gives us ordinal data. Question 3 and question 4 give us interval and ratio data, respectively. This brings us to the data in Excel. Here I've randomly assigned the responses to the four questions across 94 subjects. You'll see here at the very top, the yellow cells relate to missing values, which is where a subject did not respond to a question. Or on clinical trial data, it could be where a subject missed a visit in the study. The issue with this data for us when using SPSS is that the majority of the responses are text as opposed to numbers. In SPSS, we call these strings. Having your data type as string can lead to issues with some descriptive statistics and statistical testing that you plan on doing at a later stage. I would often facilitate training courses on introduction to data analysis using SPSS. In those courses, I would mention to the attendees that when it comes to changing the data types to your responses, that it is important to keep a record of any manipulation that you do. At this point in an introductory training course, I would mention syntax and how useful it is to keep a record of any data changes that you make. However, I wouldn't go any further, as I would feel if being introduced to SPSS, it is first important to get comfortable with the package and be confident in your ability to use it, and even more so be confident in your interpretation of its output. And then, at a later stage, start thinking about the transparency of your results and using syntax. 
So when facilitating an introductory course, I would say after giving my syntax pitch, that if changing your raw data, do it in Excel. But make sure to keep a diary of any of the changes you make. This brings us to the second spreadsheet here. In this sheet, you can see that in the formula bar, there's a track record of how the raw data has actually been changed. Now, if you subscribe to this channel, you'll find all these files that I'm showing in these recordings are available to download if you wish to practice what I'm demonstrating yourself to make sure you can get the same results. The reason I show this is to say that this is what we're looking to get from the SPSS syntax. So we will return to this spreadsheet at the end and compare what we have in SPSS to what we have here. But the bonus of doing it all in SPSS is the track record, the diary, the transparency. So the first step is to import the data into SPSS. So if we open up SPSS, you can see here now I'm in the data view of an SPSS file and it's blank. So I'm going to open up the Excel file. I'm going to look to try to import the Excel file. Okay, so I'm in this SPSS syntax folder and at the moment there's no presence of the Excel file because SPSS is looking for the data set. It's looking for the .sav file. So if I just click on the drop down menu here, I can see the various other file types and I'm going to select Excel. And then you can see here's the raw data one. So I'm just going to double click on this. When you double click on it then, this window will appear with, of showing you that it's trying to, going to import um, data from Excel. Now if you look up at the top here, there's this drop down menu. So the first, which is the first sheet, spreadsheet was the raw data and the second spreadsheet then is the coded data. Now if I'm doing an introductory training course, I would say, look, let's go to the coded data because we're trying to get to terms with SPSS. We're trying to be comfortable with SPSS. Let's start with something simple. But for us here, we're going to look at the raw data. Now, the purpose of this training course is to focus on the syntax, not necessarily to focus on these different attributes here. So I, that can be for a data recording if the interest is there. Now, traditionally, what you'd imagine you do at this point is you'd press OK. But if we press OK here, we have no record of the process. So what we're actually going to do to actually get the syntax is we're actually going to press Paste. Now, sometimes actually when you do that, you find that you actually have to press it twice, which is what I have here. And now we get a syntax window. So in SPSS, your data set is called the .sav file. Your syntax, which is going to be your script or your code, that's going to be a .sps file. Okay, so this is kind of giving us a record of how we are actually going to import the data. Okay, now if we look here at the Excel file, sorry, not the Excel file, the SPSS file, nothing has actually happened yet. Okay, the data hasn't been imported yet because what we have to do is we actually have to run the syntax. Now, like anything in programming, especially when you're kind of getting your head around it at the start, it is useful to do comments, I, I find. So up at the top here, I'm just going to put in a comment to kind of demonstrate what we're actually doing. Now, to do a comment in, X, in SPSS or in the syntax, you start it off with an asterisk. That starts the comment. Now, you can see there when I pressed asterisk, all the kind of the script after it there faded, okay, because the asterisk kind of opens a comment. And then a full stop will actually close the comment. Okay, so what I'm going to just do here is I'm going to say import data from Excel. And then I'm going to press full stop, and then that will close the comment. Okay, now based, often what I would do anyway, because I'd often be used working from the laptop, is I just kind of highlight my new script like this, and then I would press Control R. Control R is where you run your selection. If you hover the mouse over the green triangle up here at the top, you'll see that you get the run selection. So there's a few ways you could do it, or you can sometimes click in the middle of all your script here, and you could actually press Control R and it will run as well. Okay, so here I'm just going to just highlight it, I suppose it'll be just easier visually to see, and I'm going to then press Control R. When you press Control R, it'll first go to an out well, actually, sorry, I thought it would go to the output window there. Something SPSS can be funny at times. You can see an output window opens up. Okay, so if you're familiar with SPSS, you'll know that anytime you generate statistics, whether it's a kind of frequency tables or a statistical test or a graph, all the output goes to an output file, which is a .spv file. So we have four types of files when we're working with SPSS. Now, if you go back to our data set here, which is the .sav file over here, we can see here's actually our data. 
Okay, so this is the data that we have, and this is quite good now because we didn't use any copy and pasting technique. Now, copy and pasting is definitely a big no-no. Like, if you copy and paste, you might miss a column, you might miss a row, and ultimately, you just have no track record of doing it, and that's what we're just trying to promote. I suppose, ultimately, it's good practice and statistical analysis, and we're trying to promote that by using a syntax, okay? Now, we can see when we look at these uh, here, the measurements here, so we have our four measurements, okay? So uh, the first, which was relating to the first question, which was our nominal scale kind of question, then the ordinal scale, and then the interval and ratio. Now, we can see here with SPSS, what it's done is it picked up the first three here as actually string measurements, okay? And that's mainly just some, because literally as we see it here, these are all words that we're actually seeing. So it's picked it up as string. If you go over to our variable view, we can see that over here as well. You can see that the type of the data is actually going to be actually a string. Now, the fourth measurement that we have, which was the ratio data, that is coming up as numeric, and that's actually quite good. But there's actually issues with that as well. Issues that we're going to actually just have to maybe address will be down to these levels of measure down here. These are not actually in the correct format. The other thing that we might want to address is we might want to address the labels that SPSS has given to the responses, or sorry, to the questions. These labels are ultimately what will get outputted in a graph. So we'd like these labels to be, I suppose, succinct and to be um, representative of what the actual measurement is, okay? Um, the other thing then, I suppose, when we're doing this, I suppose always what you'd be kind of nearly fearful of is when you're kind of generating the syntaxes, or oh, what happens if the computer crashed or the syntax froze. So what can always be just a good point here is that you just save your syntax, okay, on a rolling basis, okay, so that if for some reason something happened, at least you have something to fall back on. So I'm just going to actually save the syntax, and I'm just going to say, I'll just call it um, syntax for the sake of it in this case, okay. So I'm just going to save that at the moment, okay. And so where we are at the moment here, if we go back to the, the handout, or sorry, the handout being the, the slides here, we're just after covering the first step of where we're importing the data from, a, from a MS Excel, and we have the syntax for that. Now, the second step that we're going to look at addressing will be how we change the data types, which is mainly down to those three string me measurements. We want to change them to actually being numeric measurements. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to break here for this uh, recording, and I'll come back for a part two where we'll address that. Okay, so come back to us uh, on that. Thank you.